Hello all, welcome to Oracle Cloud Technical Trainings. In earlier session, we discussed about how do we create a demo instance for Oracle Cloud. In this session, we'll discuss about how do we create an ICS simple web service, right? So before creating ICS integration service, we just need to understand the navigation of integration so that you know, like we can create a sample in a perfect manner. So I'm in an ICS page, like um, you will you'll be, we'll be navigating to this page from our you know like cloud infrastructure page, right? So once you again, what you can do is like um, the free cloud account which you have received, just click on sign into Oracle, sign into Oracle Cloud. So it will navigate your cloud instance page. And from there, you can select the integration. So here, click on the hamburger icon. And here, scroll down. We have to see a platform services and click on integration, right? So, and check on the integration. And if your service is already running, yeah, in my case, my service is already running. What I can do is I'll just click on this particular hamburger icon again and click on open integration console. Yeah, just click on open integration console. My service was already running, so I'll just click on that. And now I'll be navigating to my integration ICS page. So let's understand the basic navigation ICS and we'll just create a very simple demo of ICS service. So, yep, perfect. So here, if you observe in the Oracle integration, as of now, I have two services which are available for me. One is integration cloud service, another one is visual, visual builder cloud service. And here I'll just click on integrations because we want to concentrate on ICS now. So I'll just click on integrations. So yeah, by default, Oracle provides some set of sample web services, which are, you know, like which will make, you know, like which are, necessary for a developer to work on. I mean to say like a sample, very simple web services where you can developer can test it to learn how it works and all those information, right? So now here, if you observe, I'm in the designer page. By default, when I clicked on integration, it came to designer page. And if, if, we, if we just click on previous, so it provides some set of things in the ICS. In the ICS, we have three, three navigations, like I'm into integrations page now, right? So here I have designer, monitoring as well as setting right so as a developer when you want to design any of the integrations you have to click on designer so now let's say i'll click on designer in the designer we have these number of things right so in the designer here the first one is integration so integration is a place where we design our integrations the end-to-end -end integrations so when i click on connections connection is a place where we create connections nothing but like a file adapter connection rest service connection soap service connection or you know ebs adapter connection cloud erp adapter connection the connection sab connection all those things we can create it here if you observe when i click on create it will tell you what kind of connection you can create it so there are a lot number of predefined or preloaded adapters which are already available and you can search with the appropriate one let us say if i want to check oracle cloud erp adapter just search with oracle and here if you observe it will provide a lot number of things which oracle is providing for the I mean, uh, the adapters of Oracle. The similarly, let us say if you are working on a SAP, you can just search with SAP and you can find the SAP adapters. Similarly, let us say if you want to work on any Adobe related one, you can check on the adapter adapters. Or maybe if you Salesforce, you can check the Salesforce adapters, right? Or let us say if your particular ERP is not belonging to any of the, uh, I mean to say like if, if, if you're working on a particular thing, particular application, which doesn't belong to any of the ERP connections, but still it, it should be in a web service, right? It should, it can be a web service or it can be a file or FTP. Here, if you observe file adapter and you have an FTP adapter and the other one is like, let us say if your particular web service is a REST connection, which is any, which is independent of any, any, any of the ERP connections, simply you can use it. Or uh, let us say if it is soap, we can use a soap one also, right? So we have different set of adapters which you generally come across. So I'll just click on cancel now. This is a place where you can create a connection based on any of the available adapters. Available adapters or a connection types. And now other one is a lookups. So this is kind of a lookup table where we'll have a key and value pairs which you generally use, which you can use it in the integration, okay? Now coming to the packages. So packages is nothing but when you create an integrations, right? Like if you want to group some set of integrations in a specific package that's where you know like this will come into picture here if you observe in my case right so where yeah i'll just click on load more items uh, where is mine okay it is not showing mine let's refresh yeah so generally what happens is integration like these are nothing but let us say if you are coming from java background when you create any java 
files, you'll ha you have to mention the package, right? Nothing with the folder structure in which you want to consider your integration. Similarly, like when you create integrations, so you have an option called packages. You can mention that so that all the integrations of that, all the integrations which you mentioned of that package will be available here, right? Like it shows one integration, one integration, right? So similarly, it will be available for you, the package according to the package. Now this agent, agent will come into picture when you want to connect on-premise to the cloud, okay? And the adapters, yeah. So this we already see saw in the connections, right? Connections like these are the predefined adapters which are available in Oracle. And libraries, nothing but if you want to use any external library, you can mention the library. You can register them and you can use it. Now this is all about the designer, right? Let's see the other one, monitoring. So monitoring comes into picture when you want to monitor your web service. Nothing but you have a well, you I mean to say like you have an so I'm, I've been using the technology web service like uh, interchangeably you can call it as your ICA service or a web service both should be same right because at the end of the day like uh, the end result of a ICS program is nothing but it's a web service it can be a soap web service or it can be a rest web service right now uh, we are in the monitoring page now click on dashboard so dashboard is a place where it will tell you what is the success rate or failure rate or you know like what is happening to the integrations right now here if you observe my my particular screen here I have a success rate of 45%. There are two integrations, two connections which are up and two integrations which are up. Here, if you observe the other things are not active. I have not activated them, right? So they are down, I can say. And you know, like these are the list of uh, messages which I have received and in the success, failure rate and all those things. Click on integrations. So here, if you observe in the monitor integrations, it tell you like a, which set of integrations are invoked and what are the success response and failure and errors of them, right? And similarly integration, we already saw it. So which agents are running what is the status of them whether down or up kind of thing and this is a demo instance like a few set of properties will be different from your normal real-time uh, licensed version right so message is a tracking purpose like a it's simple you know like a, when we invoke a web service we'll mention what is the tracking attribute if you want to find out based on a tracking stuff you can do that and yeah errors it's all about errors right you can click on errors and come into the settings. So settings generally like, you know, uh, like this is place where you can mention some set of configuration information for your ICS instance, like a, like a different set of, you know, certificates and, you know, like a database if you want to purge it. You don't have direct database access as such, but you can just purge the, your logging information kind of thing. And the logging levels you can mention and the API flat platform and tracing, uh, tracing things. So at this level, you know, the in, in initial demo instance, we don't want to get much deeper of these things. Let's, uh, as of now, we would have understood like uh, the designer integration, designer and monitoring. These are the major thing you, as a developer, you have to concentrate on initially. Later on, you can understand the deeper stuff of the ICS. So I'll just go to designer now. I'll click on integrations. So this is one of the sample which I created. So here, if you want to now, let us say, I just want to invoke it first. So later I'll tell you like what I have done to design this particular sample. So yet this particular service should be active if you want to invoke from an external system, right? So it is an already inactive. You click on this particular gear icon. It will tell you like what is the endpoint URL as well as how to run it. So I'll just click on this endpoint URL. It will navigate here. Now this endpoint URL is the end URL which you have to invoke to test this web service. So in our case, this is endpoint URL, right? So what I do is I'll just copy this endpoint URL. So here, if you observe in the flower braces, I have a message, right? So that is my input parameter payload according to my connection, according to the thing which I created. So I'll just mention this payload here. Hello, ICS demo. So this is the input parameter I'm passing to my payload. I think to the web service, copy this and go to the SOAP UI. If you have a different tool you can use that also like a postman also it will work i'll just click on rest i'll mention the url click on ok so now you have to enter the credentials of your ics credentials your cloud account credentials i'll just see right now click on run and let's see what does the response it provides Yep, click on JSON because the output I'm expecting is JSON, right? Hello, ICS demo. And let us if you change some other out input parameter, like I'll just say, hey, demo. Okay, I'll just click on this green icon again. You have to see the message, hey, demo, right? So I'm providing this input and this is the output it is providing, right? This is JSON output, okay? So now 
for this particular sample, what I have done, right? So what you can do is let's go to our sample now. So this particular CRAM REST echo service is using one of the REST connection. So first of all, like as a developer, if you want to start with creating any sample, first thing is understand like what all you want to do it for your sample, right? In my case, I just want to design a very simple sample, which takes an input and provides me output. Very simple. Take the input and provide me output. I don't want to do any business logic at all because this is a very simple demo. So that's the reason what I've done is, first of all, I, if you, for any integration, you require a basic connection, okay? I'll just click on connection. So I have created a connection which is of type trigger, okay? So I'll just show you, like uh, this is my connection name. I'll click on this one. And here if you observe, there is nothing. There is no connection information at all. Only thing is the type is trigger. Let me show you. Let us see. Click on create. And I'll select it as rest. And here the role, right? Mention trigger. Okay. Test, rest. <laughs> Test and rest. So the role is triggered click on create once you click on create yeah so it will not ask you what is the url of your rest web service what is the you what is the credentials you want to pass it what is the input parameter there is nothing it will ask you just a simple trigger connection of your rest web service okay click on save now here whenever whenever if you want to use any connection it has to be 100 percent 100 percent verified then only you can use this particular connection in your connection in your integration right so first of all Connection has to be created. This connection you have to use in the integration, right? Click on close. Now go to integration and click on create. Now let us say here there are different types of styles which are available, but in our case, I'll go with select this one app driven orchestration. So sometimes this will be pretty slow. So we have to bear. Test rest integration, right? And you can mention the integrate this all stuff. And here you can mention let us I'll just say CRAM. Here is a package we have to mention. Click on create. Now here, if you observe, like a by default, it provides the list of triggers which are available, right? I'll just click on test rest. And you know, you have to mention what is the endpoint you want to call it. So like I'll just say test rest. And here. I can mention what is the parameter you want to pass it. I'll just say slash message. And here you select the first and third one here. Click on next. And there is nothing you have to mention the rest kind of request parameter. Don't mention anything. And in this response, right? Select the JSON as a type. And here in the inline, click on inline. And here in my document, I mention like this. Mention the response. Click on OK. Now that's it. Click on next and done. You can see the endpoint summary and slash message, right? This is the input we have to pass it. Why are we passing one input message? Because until unless you have the one input message, it will not work. The reason is here if you observe, right? It gave one error for us. So this is our flow. This is my connection, the mapping and echo, nothing but response. So click on this hamburger icon, click on actions here, click on tracking. So on the input message which we are passing, just what you do is click on this particular select an element and move. Yeah. Now this input message is considered as a tracking attribute. Click on save. Click on save. Yes. And close. That's it. Now click on this integration. Yeah, sorry. One more thing you have to do it. Make sure that you design update the mapping, right? Click on this mapping, click on edit, and here select this message. You just do a connection here message yeah and also what are the welcome message if you want to type it just click on this welcome message and here test welcome okay save and close now validate close that's it so almost we are ready click on save and close right so this is our test rest integration. Now try to enable it. If it doesn't enable, it means that there is something wrong in our integration, right? Now, if it gets enabled, yeah. If you get this particular window for activation, it means that, okay, this is good to invoke, but doesn't mean it will work successfully, right? Until unless you test it, there is no guarantee, right? Click on this URL. Now copy the 
end point url here if you observe there should be some difference between my earlier sample and this sample right obviously so this is the name right so till here it was same only thing was this is the only difference right sriram rest echo earlier one and this is the test integration right i'll just copy this url copy this url same again go to rest uh, this one i'll just remove everything here i'll say test new test new sample okay click on request let's see what will happen now obvious perfect right test new sample so this is how we can design a very simple ic sample so always start with a very basic sample so that you'll get confidence to learn few more stuff thank you